So let's say we are in the Apple market. What I want to do in this video is think about both demand and supply for the apples at different prices. So let's draw ourselves a little graph here. And we already know this right over here, the vertical axis is the price axis. And this is, we're going to say it's price per pound. And the horizontal axis, this is the quantity. The quantity of apples. And let's put some tick marks here. Let's say that's $1 a pound, $2 a pound, $3 a pound, $4 a pound, and $5. And let's say that this is thousands, thousands of pounds produced. And we have to set a period. So let's say this is all for the next week. And so this is 1,000 pounds, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, and 5,000. Now let's think about both the supply and the demand curves for this market, or potential supply and demand curves. So first I will do, first I will do the demand. So if, we, if the price of apples were really high, and I encourage you to always think about this when you're about to draw your demand and supply curves. If the price of apples were really high, what would happen to consumers? Well, they say they wouldn't demand much. So the quantity demanded would be low. So if the price were high, maybe the quantity demanded is like 500 apples. 500 apples. And, I, and once again, I'm being very careful to say the quantity demanded is 500 apples. I'm not saying the demand is 500 apples. The demand is the entire relationship. The actual qu specific quantity, we call that the quantity demanded. So at a price of $5, the quantity demanded would be about 500. Maybe at a price of $1, the quantity demanded would be maybe 4,000 pounds. And so our demand curve might look something like this might look something like that. Let me draw it a little bit less bumpy. So our demand curve might look something like that. I can label it. That is our demand curve. And now let's think about our supply curve. Well, there's some price below which we aren't even willing to produce apples. So let's say that's like 50 cents. So at 50 cents, that's where we're even just willing to start producing apples. Let's say if apple, if the price of apples got to a dollar, we'd be the quantity we'd be willing to supply is about a thousand pounds, and it just keeps increasing as the price increases. So this is the supply curve. And when I talk about we, I'm talking about all of the suppliers in this market. We could be doing this for a specific supplier. We could be doing this for a specific market. We could be doing this for the global Apple market, however you want to view it. But we'll, for the sake of this video, let's assume it's like our little town that is fairly isolated and all of that. Now let's think about what happens in different scenarios. What happens if the, 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 the suppliers of the apples going into that week for their own planning purposes, they just think for whatever reason, that they're only going to be able to sell the apples at a dollar per pound. And so given that, given their given the supply curve, they only they're only they only are able to they only supply one thousand pounds. So this is what the suppliers plan for, and this is where they set the price point at one dollar. At one dollar per pound. Now what's going to happen in that scenario? Well in that scenario they supplied one thousand the quantity supplied is one thousand pounds. So let me write this down. So I'll do it in pink for this scenario. So in this scenario, the quantity, quantity supplied, quantity supplied is 1,000 pounds. And what is the quantity demanded? Quantity demanded, demanded, demanded. And this is all a scenario where the price, the price or the initial price that the growers or the producer set was one dollar per pound. One dollar per pound. Well, the quantity demanded one dollar per pound is four thousand four thousand pounds of apples. Four thousand pounds of apples. So what do we have here? Well, here we have a shortage. We have a shortage of. We have a shortage. A shortage of three thousand apples at that price point. At a dollar, a lot more people are going to want to buy apples. And these the producers just didn't, I guess, did they didn't they didn't figure that out right and they didn't produce enough apples. Now what will naturally start happening? If you have the shortage, you have all these people who want to buy apples and you only have so many apples there, what 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 might happen in the next period, in the next week? Well, first of all, those apples that are out there, they might get bid up, so the prices start going to start going up. 
the price is going to start going up. People are going to start bidding up the apples. They want them so badly, they're going to start bidding them up. And as they start getting bid up, the producers are going to say, wow, there's so many people. We're running out of apples. We also need to increase the quantity produced. And so the quantity, the quantity will also go up. So the price will go up. If you look at it from the, from the supplier's point of view, the price will go up and the quantity will go up. They will move. They will move along this line there. So maybe in the next period, there's less of a shortage, or they they get slow. Cl- they move. They move away from that shortage situation. If the quantity, if the price and quantity increase a little bit, so maybe the price goes to two dollars, and, and the quantity goes to I don't know. This looks like about 1,900, 1,900 pounds. Now all of a sudden, you have less of a shortage. And I think you see that I'm getting to an interesting point over here. But I won't go there just yet. I won't go there just yet. Now let's think about another situation. Let's think about after this happens, price and quantity increases so much that it essentially overshoots this interesting point right over here. So in the next week, the suppliers all say, wow, people want our apples so badly. Let's just the price really high at $3. And at $3, we're really excited about producing apples. So we, the suppliers, we, the suppliers, are going to produce, let me do this in a color I haven't used yet. We, the suppliers, are going to produce at $3 a pound. We're hoping to sell 3,000 pounds of apples. So this is where maybe where they adjust to the next week. But what's going to happen there at a price of $3? So that's this scenario right over here, the price of $3. So the price is now, the price is now $3 per pound. Well, now. The quantity, quantity supplied, the quantity supplied is going to be 3,000 pounds, 3,000, 3,000 pounds. I could write 3,000 pounds. And what is the quantity demanded? The quantity demanded, quantity demanded is now much lower. The price is high now because consumers might want to go buy other things or they can't afford an apple or whatever it might be. And so now the quantity demanded, I know that looks like about, I don't know, 1,300. 1,300 pounds. 1,300 pounds. So what situation do we have now? Well, now we have a much bigger supply than, or the quantity supplied is much bigger than the quantity demanded. So now we face, we face a surplus. So now we have a surplus. Actually, let me not draw that line there. I want to make it clear this is all the same scenario. We now have a surplus of, what is this? 700 will get us to 2,000. We have a surplus of 1,700 pounds of apples. And now what happens in a surplus situation? Well, apples won't stay good forever. So maybe the, the, the producers get a little desperate. So they start, they start selling. They start reducing the price, maybe to start attracting some consumers. So they start reducing the price. And also, when they, when they start seeing that the price is going down and you have this glut of apples and that they're all going bad and they're not getting sold, the quantity, the quantity is also going to start going down. They'll produce fewer and fewer apples. And so we'll move here. We'll move here along the supply curve. And as you decrease, as you decrease the price, as you decrease the price, what's going to happen to the demand curve? Well, the demand is going to go up. So over here, the price was too high. So there's, it's natural for the sellers to lower the price. And so when you lower the price, it also reduces the quantity. We go this way. And when you lower the price, it increases demand. You go that way. If the price to get from the get-go were too low, then you have this huge shortage. Things get bid up. The prices go up. As the price goes up, the suppliers want to produce more. They move up the curve. And as the price goes up, then the people will demand less. And you see that it's all converging on a point right over here where the two lines intersect. And let me do that in a, it's all converging right over there. And that's the point at which supply, the, at, that's the price at which This is the price at which the quantity supplied will equal the quantity demanded. And we call this price, we call this, which looks like for this scenario, maybe about $2.15. So let me just write it there. So $2.15, we call that the equilibrium price. Equilibrium, equilibrium, equilibrium price is $2.15 a pound. And it's the price at which the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded. And so this, this quantity 
this this quantity where supply where the quantity supplied is equal to the quantity demanded that's the equilibrium quantity equilibrium equilibrium quantity and that right over here looks like it's right about i don't know 2200 2200 pounds 2200 pounds and assuming nothing else changes this is a good scenario for both the consumers and the producers they keep producing 2200 they charge this price and everything's happy all the apples get sold and none of them go bad